Join us each week for some booze-free banter about life without booze. If you're entertaining the idea of cutting back your booze by a day, a week, a month, or for the rest of your life, we would love for you to tune in. Buckle up and come along for a ride that may just change your life. Just a heads up, some of the conversations we have may be triggering. Please reach out to your local resource centre in Australia. That's Lifeline 131114. Meso! <laughs> Hello, Brisa! I, I feel like a radio jockey. <laughs> yeah. Meso! <laughs> Brisa! Yeah, a shock shock jock. What's going go. on? How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm great, mate. Thank you. How about you? Tell me how I'm you good. Went. It's um, actually a nice day here in Bendigo today. No more rain, which is nice. Um, yeah. I'm good. I've had a good week. I've actually, uh, well, we're at the start of December now, so I'm about to, yeah, enter the eye of the storm with Christmas parties. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mate, I'm booked up. I'm booked up for December. Um, and actually, at the time of this recording, I've got a girls' weekend coming up this weekend. Oh, in the game? No, <laughs> we're going. We're going coastal this weekend. So the girls? No, girls? it's another group of girls. Uh, yeah. And there's so there's eight of us going down to lawn. Yeah. And good. I think six of the eight will be drinking. So I'll have a sober buddy. But I'm actually, and she's also gluten free. Uh, so I'm going to pack oh. a whole like plethora of drinks for us to drink. Oh, that's so good. I love that. You're the winger. Yeah. So, yes. and I've said to her, because it's going to be like cold in lawn, I think it's going to be 16 or 15 both days on Saturday and Sunday. So I was like, pack your yep. bathers and we'll like run into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How invigorating. Yes, I was actually going to ask you, how's that Wim Hof method going Yes, for you? mate, we, we spoke about it in episode one. So I'm fully, like, committed. I've been having two-minute cold showers at, at the end of, like, a normal shower and two minutes and I haven't missed a beat because I know that if I skip one day, it's all over Red Rover. I won't, I won't go back to it. So it's been great. I- I don't know how you're doing it because after that first step, I thought, oh, I'm going to give this a bit of a go. <laughs> and, like, you, <laughs> I think you started at 15 seconds and my 15 seconds, you know, would normally be one, two, three Mississippi. But I was like, what did that? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cold. I'm going to give another go, though, because oh, I want in well, on this. So I want the invigoration next It's been interesting because I know that if I've had, like, if I haven't got up and exercised, I really dread the cold shower situation and when I'm counting because I also have my like uh phone on timer so oh. yeah I'm really into it so <laughs> yes. but, yeah, but I also count it out as well and I know that when I am not looking forward to it I count faster but when I am in the zone I'm pretty much on two minutes with my counting so yeah I mean I'm, I mean I'm gonna give it a crack yeah and speaking what of cracking I'm actually about to crack <laughs> Because we're because we are in December at the time this episode's dropping, December for me is bubbles and champagne. Bubbly. <laughs> so I bought along today a non-alcoholic <laughs> champagne called Vin- Vinada. Have you heard of it? Or have you had it? I, I, I haven't had it, but I've seen it splashed all over yeah. your page at I Flaunt AF Drinks. You've been plugging that good. Tell us about well, it. Well, I thought it was New Zealand, but I'm wrong because I'm just reading the bottle. It's actually produced in, <laughs> produced in France. I've got, um, sorry, produced in oh. France. I've got French champagne today. Oui, oui, oui. oui, oui. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Hello. Thank oh, you. thank you. M- M- Merci Baku. Oh, you. you know the Baku bit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure what the Baku bit that, is. Thank you very add much. Add that in. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, au revoir, baguette. Your, your play? <laughs> no play. How good were those ads? Petit Mio, yes. <laughs> How iconic were those Yo Play ads, though? Yes, yes, the guy yes. with the bike. Yes. So iconic. Oh, no, I reckon they were a 90s ads. one. So I'm going to pour this, but you you, you crack on, Meso. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you since you're, I can't go, you were drinking, I'm drinking. So I'm hot tucking in too because I love a rosé. This is from Altina, also from Brunswick Aces. Um, and we're going to have that over ice. And I think it's a bit fizzy as well, oh, nice. so I'm getting the fizz on. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, as you're pouring that, tell me about your week, mate. Yes, well, oh, I'm so pumped. So this um, this week I actually had a new friend date. So friend yes. dates with friends that I haven't met before yes. in real life. And it is Loz from 
um, smug underscore AF underscore cocktails. So Loz was down here um, getting their smug margarita cans off the line. So amazing. So, so she's down here in Melbourne. And poor Jo, she's in Queensland, so she couldn't come down. So I took, so I flew the flag. Anyway, I met her at Brunswick Aces. <laughs> How was it? I'm so keen to get so there. Good. Oh my god, I can't, can't wait to go there. I want it to be my new local. It's only about a half hour drive from where I am, but it was so, oh, it's so divine. Like the inside, the decor is so good. And I had like, I can't remember the names. It was a, one was like a mojito, and the other one I would never normally go for a creamy drink. But it was, it was, it was like a watermelon pina colada. It was so good, but it wasn't sickly or anything. It was, oh, it was divine. Anyway, so, uh, and Loz brought her friend with her, Ash, and she's just gorgeous. And she's, um, Scottish as well. So that whole accent situation, I'm just, in, <laughs> I'm just loving to see. Anyway, I met these new people, new friends, something in a normal situation, if I was meeting friends, I'd get a little bit wigged mm-hmm. out, like I'd be a bit social, socially anxious yep. leading up to it, and I would drink half a bottle of rosé yep. even be, while I was getting ready. I could not believe, I was so surprised, I did not have one ounce of social anxiety oh, even leading really? up to it. Normally, yeah, not a scrap. That's <sighs> not to say I won't have it mm-hmm. in the future, and that doesn't, um, discredit anyone that gets social anxiety. Everybody's is very different, you know, but I was really surprised and I was like, why is that? Why have I not wigged out, panicked in this situation? I would normally, because it's a new person, new place, I'm on my own, I haven't met these people before, I'm not drinking, like all the things, all the recipe for social anxiety and I didn't get it. And why? Because there was no alcohol running around my system. There was no residue of alcohol in my veins, in my blood, so I didn't have that anxiety. Incredible. Fascinating. Amazing. And I had a beautiful time, drove home, high as a kite, felt great. And and also the other thing that happened is when I was getting ready, none of my clothes fit because we've come out of lockdown, so I'm carrying an extra bit of pudding. Christmas pudding is <laughs> on the way. <laughs> but I was carrying a bit of extra pudding and normally I would have wigged out because I couldn't do my jeans up and I normally would have had a, like, Got my tits in a tangle and just completely <laughs> dropped my lolly because I couldn't put my jeans on. And anyway, I went back to the trusty tutu. I've got this gorgeous pink tutu skirt. Actually, another quick story. Okay, I'll wrap it up quickly. When we went to a festival last year in Adelaide, I was cruising around with um, one of our friends, Patty Lay. Hi, Patty. Um, <laughs> and, and everyone I walked past said, Oh my God, I love your skirt. Oh my God, I love your skirt. And Patty goes, It's the compliment skirt. So <laughs> I love it. The compliment skirt. So it is, and I wore it, and I did get so many amazing compliments the next day for Oh, the love it. Skirt. And we, oh, we, we actually great. discussed that tutu skirt, I reckon, last week when you were going to meet the girls. And and sure enough, yeah. an ad popped up on Facebook for me. <laughs> for you to get one. And just just on your friend date, Mason, like it's one thing to yeah. meet someone, you know, for the first mm. time, but you were a third wheel. Yeah. Like you were being double. You were yeah. double dating on your own. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was like I was on the panel, yes. like I was in an interview panel. That's awesome. <laughs> they, were, they were gorgeous girls and, like, I just see that friendship, you know, blossoming over time and we'll catch up again and it's it's just wonderful. So cheers. Cheers, cheers. to Brunswick Aces, new friendships and Altina and your Yeah, and my vineyard is bloody tops. I'm loving it. Yeah. Loving it sick. <laughs> cheers. All right. All right. How was that? Sorry, I went on a rant. No, it's all good. <laughs> Shame, 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 shame. <laughs> so, all right. I'd like to say it was back in my twenties. <laughs> Where are you? You're doing good work. <laughs> um, uh, we spent a lot of time on South Bank, like Arbury Float. Nat um, from mine from Optail started her page from Arbury Float, and obviously there's just so many bars and clubs to just jump in between. Um, and so we pop between each of them all day long after drinking rosé and they've got this amazing, I think it's like a rosé sangria type situation in a beautiful carafe. And, in fact, I'm kind of actually missing that a bit. My birthday's coming up and I'm like, oh, it did pain me a little bit the other day. I'm like, oh, my God, that was my favourite drink ever. Anyway, we, <laughs> we bar hop, bar hop, bar hop. This goes on, just way too much to drink. And we get to the casino and we just absolute rat bags, like really cheeky. 
you know when you walk up to something like so there'd be like people standing around the pokies and they're holding their drinks or holding their money or playing pokies or whatever you know when you walk up to someone and you put your hand under their drink and do a fake like <laughs> tip <laughs> oh wow <laughs> a fakey so we were running through like just absolute menaces running through the casino just doing like fake like little taps and they'd like get a bit of a fright or if they're counting their money like we'd just try and grab their money or like when the pokies we'd like pretend to like get in there and press the buttons and just like and the panic on these people or like you know when you tap like the left shoulder but on the right side you know just real pest pest (laughs) absolute pest anyway um I was standing also at the with security and I was telling people they couldn't come in or they couldn't, <laughs> couldn't come in and I ha- was telling them they had to, like, pop their collars. Like, it's collars up show, mate. You had to pop your collar like Elvis. <laughs> running the show, mate. <laughs> yeah, completely running the show. Anyway, we left the casino for a bit and um, went to come back in. They wouldn't let me back in. <laughs> I was <barred. laughs> Mate, security were all over you on their little cameras. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, yeah, barred from the cast, not great. And then in between all that, we'd actually had some dinner and we went out for dinner and um, we um, left it in power. Oh, we did a runner. <laughs> was it accidental because you, you were drunk and just went, eh. Just blind. Ew. And then the next day, next day, I was horrified. I was absolutely like all the running amok stuff, you know, that's all funny and cheeky and mm. no one got hurt. But that was really, really naughty. And I was terrified the next day. I was like, oh, my God, they're going to see it on CVT- CCTV camera. Like just devastated that I'd done something so naughty and disrespectful and just putrid. Like just it's – I wouldn't do that sober, no. Brisa. That is not happening no. sober. So anyway, so I went back the next day and said, I'm so sorry. I thought he paid. He, she thought, he thought – she paid and we end up paying, but yeah, just shit. Who's doing that? Have you been let into the casino since, mate? Or are you, are oh you banned God. for life? <laughs> <laughs> Absolute menaces. So funny, but I would not do that sober. How was the restaurant? Were they okay? Like, were they just like, cool? Yep. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for yeah, being like, yeah. they were so busy they didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Good to get mm. it off your chest. Mm. Yeah, good to vent it out. Yes. Well, I was um, Go. I was grappling because obviously I have a lot of shame stories to pull out of the bag. <laughs> and I was really gra- grappling with like a sort of recent one versus a long time ago one. But the long time ago one's relevant because it was at a Christmas party. And obviously we're going into peak Christmas party season. So I thought I'll pull this one out. Um, and this also goes back to one of my earliest memories of drinking as well. So it's kind of like it's um, oh. patient zero. It's, it's where it all started, mate, and it's a doozy. So I would have been, I reckon, 16 years old, so full underage drinker, Ooh. yep, and I was working at Hungry Jack's. Burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. So I was <laughs> obviously in high school and, you know, working casually at Jack's, which I loved, <laughs> and we had a Chris Star Christmas party. So I... I remember, it's sketchy details too, I'll just call it out now, but I remember we went to the pub down the road first. So I was with a group of people um, and they were older, so I reckon some of the people in the group were 18. So a little old Breeza was 16. And I snuck vodka into the pub, right, in my handbag. Don't know where I got it from, but I snuck vodka in and I was pouring myself drinks like it was normal. So I didn't, essentially I didn't sneak in, I just brought it with me thinking, this is what you do. And like I'd been in pubs like, you know, as a child and as a teenager, but I must have thought in my head, well, because I am underage, I can't drink, I'll just bring my own in and just pour my own at the pub. So, and I was so, yeah, full. Like I thought in my head it was made complete sense. And I remember people who were with us were going, you can't bring your own alcohol into the pub, Breeza. I'm like, oh, righto. So I was just like sneakily pouring my drink. I was drinking a vodka and Portello. <laughs> and can, I, can I just make a note? Portello is a strong flavour, right? Oh so God. I would have been free pouring, Portello. like free pouring nine, nine parts vodka, one part Portello <laughs> and not being able just to a- taste the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> so all 
already, you know, you've got a situation where a 16-year-old inexperienced girl drinker is smashing down hard liquor (laughs) and free-pouring it herself. (laughs) So from the pub we went to, we were doing go-karting, right? Now, I am still etched in my memory. I can tell you the exact outfit I had on that day. And when I left the pub, I was like, I couldn't walk, right? Oh. So, and they're going, what do we do with her? And so they took me to go-karting. So I, and I don't remember pretty much from there onwards. And it's all daytime. I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember being at a go-karting place. But people have filled in the blanks for me um, back when I was 16. So apparently I was just sort of slouched over vomiting Oh. Well, everyone else, like I was a massive liability. Everyone else was having fun. Although I obviously ruined the Christmas party for, for my friends because they were looking after me. And then I was also told that I, um, and I could just see me doing this. I was like, no, nah, I want to have a go, go karting. So I <laughs> yeah. ran out, I ran out and tried to get into the go kart. And like four people had to, you know, peel me off the go kart. Oh. Ended up back at a girl's house that I was staying at. And just, I think her mum looked after me that night. So bad, bad times at the Christmas party. And then we talk about shame and self-loathing now. I had it back then, Meso. And I, I wow. can still remember the feeling that I had in my heart and in my head of going to work whenever my, ne- my next shift was and walking through the doors and going, what are people going to be saying? What are they going to be thinking? I was so ashamed. I was so embarrassed, but clearly didn't learn because I did, went on to do it for another 20 bloody five years. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, looking back as a 16-year-old girl, I was I blacked out. I had regret. I had shame. I had self-loathing the next day. And I looked back and go, I wish I could get that, get that 16-year-old girl, give her a big hug and say, just you don't need to drink to fit in. I don't know why I was yeah. drinking, but I was, I've been thinking about it this week. I'm like, was I drinking to fit in? I, yeah. That's the only explanation I have, mate. It's really interesting, isn't it? Even doing this pod, it's we're looking deeper into our behaviours and what we've done. It's really confronting, isn't 100% it? One hundred percent, it is. And really, yeah. It's yeah, and you know stuff that we've suppressed yeah. or put it down, you know, put aside, yes. and now we're bringing it to the surface, and it's like, wow, yeah. <laughs> and I, Whoa. I know sixteen-year-old girls, you know, and like um, uh, friends' children who are that age. Yeah. And I'm like, imagine if they did that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I just think, I don't know. But anyway, it's good. It's, uh, yeah, it's 16. It's, it's, it, is, it feels so young, but at that time it was so right. 100%. I thought I was an adult. Like I got this baby, <laughs> I can, I can just go yeah. on a car. <laughs> you poor tello. I know. And I can like, imagine you just legless still wanting to go on the yeah. go-kart. Like I'm going to win this race like you're my Schumacher. And I'm like, I'm competitive. So I'll be like, no, no, it's not for me. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I feel your pain so much like the next day and that's what I felt like too when I was, South Bank is our favourite place in the world and I felt like I had this massive big neon sign yeah. all over me going, you're a thief, you're a pest, you're an absolute menace. Yep. yep. Just disgusting human mm-hmm. being. But we're not. Like it's, we wouldn't be doing that sober and it's all because of alcohol. Yep. And what do we say, Meso? <laughs> It wouldn't it have wouldn't happened have if we weren't. If we're hammered. hammered. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we mess that up. Woo! <laughs> one day, mate, one day. Um, so let's get into it. Yep. Righto, Breezo, what are we talking about today? Righto, mate. So we are talking about, and I think this topic is super, super relevant going into December, January peak uh, seasons for socialising. We're talking about socialising without a skinful. Mm. And I don't like to say sober socialising. I don't know. I don't know. Now, I what think do you think? Because we, well, I think because sober comes with, and I was talking to friends about this the other day, when people hear the word sober, and you would have been the same and I have been too, we attach rehab, alcoholic. Yeah. It's loaded. Yeah, it so is, mate. It's put into that, do you know what I mean, for, for the average person? Yep. That's what's the word sobriety because we've because rock stars, celebrities, we've seen in the media, they're sober. 
therefore they've been to rehab. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Whereas for us, we're really comfortable saying sobriety because it's a great place to be. I found myself saying alcohol-free a lot more. Yeah, I like that, alcohol-free. Yeah, Yeah. because it just sits a little bit better and it doesn't, people don't wig out so much and go, oh, you're a boozer. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yes, alcohol-free socialising, I like it. I like it. So that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one. Would you like me to kick off? Go for I'm actually going to kick off with a slogan. Oh, <laughs> oh I like it. Bumper sticker. <laughs> yes. So in the words of Nike, just, oh. just do it. <laughs> yeah. Swish. <laughs> yes, I'm into so it. So just do it. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because I've, like, I've been really thinking about this pretty hard, is that mm. we, we, you, I, everyone, we all socialize during the day without alcohol okay yeah we're at work we're talking to people we might be out I don't know at someone's house catching up we during the during the daytime generally when we're socializing with people we're not blind drunk right <laughs> <laughs> some people might be that's their, generally, that's their thing <laughs> unless you meet on a zoom call <laughs> yes. keep up, Rosanna, keep yes. up. <laughs> so I was just like why do why is it then when the sun goes down or when there's an event on, we feel like we have to splash booze <laughs> everywhere. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. Isn't it? Is it because it's an outlet? I don't know. Like, is and I suppose like looking back at my drinking days, yeah, it, it was an outlet. I was using it as an as an outlet. Some people use mm-hmm. it to get confidence. I suppose as well yeah. before they before they go out. Yeah, yeah. It just sort of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? It's like veggie martin toast, <laughs> yes. peas, and, peas and carrots. <laughs> like, you know, they just go together. But, um, and we've just been, it's just, it's just a culture. It's just a culture we live in. Like say, like in Italy, they have their wine or their beautiful glass of wine or their, with their meal. Yeah. And but they're not getting shit faced. Like they're not, they're not out to get smashed. Is it just because we. They're enjoying the wine. Our culture is, our cult- is yeah. binge drinking. And we're just, it's just a done thing perhaps. Like where yeah. I feel yeah. like. You know, we're rebels, Mesa, because we are. We spoke about it last episode, going against the grain, or whenever yeah. it was. Like, yeah, we are um, rebelling against the norm. The norm. Look at you and your sixteen-year-old self. Where did you learn that idea that you had to go and drink smash vodka and Portello? Where did you yeah, learn that? Because everyone was doing it. That's just what you mm. do. It's just, it's just the the normal thing. And we are, we are paving a new way here. Yeah, we are pioneers, <laughs> mate. Oh, actually, I hit my five months the other day, so I'm fully. Oh, did yeah, you? congratulations. Well, yeah, I'm fully. Well, back in November, so yeah, I'm fully um uncharted, fully flesh. uncharted territory. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. That's an amazing effort. Well done, well done, Thanks, mate. So yeah, just do it. Just do it. Love it. You touched on it last week. You were t- um and talking about how Christmases you growing up was really magical and it was a really amazing time and then your situation changed and you realised that not everyone's Christmases are the same. So I'm just going to go on a bit of a journey about that. And for Christmases, they can be really miserable. They can be really the expectations that we have, that we've all got to have this. We've grown up with these ads on the tally with these perfect families, the Woolworths ad with the whole family around and mum bringing out the turkey and there's all the trimmings, all the gloriousness. Um, And it's just not like that, you know, and it's really hard, like the Christmas carols, the sparkly decorations, Mm -hmm. the lights, it's all, you know, but then there's families that have been torn apart. There's, you know, grief, there's alcoholism, there's separation, there's distance between people. Um, But we're all expected to come together. Mm Um, on this one day when families, lots of families don't even get along. They don't even like each other. So um, it's just a bit of a understanding that that's for, it's really, it's so hard. Even like in, you know, song lyrics of the Christmas carols, um, it's hard to, you can't escape it. It's like alcohol. You can't escape the magic that is Christmas, but it's just a really hard time for so many people. Um, But even like me, like I still hold on to, this magical Christmas, but it's not, Mm. it's just not going to be like that anymore. So I think um, just understanding that those pressures, you're not on your own is what I'm saying. There's, you know, where I I experienced that, my the Christmases that I once dreamed of and wanted, they're not the same for me Mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're you're not alone, like you said. You hit the nail on the head, you're not alone. Yeah. 
exactly. And I think um, it's surprising actually working, flying for Virgin. There's lots of people desperate to have Christmas off. It's their favourite time of the year, but there's lots of people that want to work because they just don't want to be home for Christmas. It's really interesting. What about you? What's your vibe on that as well? Um, Look, obviously I've got kids, so I'm all about making Christmas magical for them. Yeah. So put aside yeah. any emotions that I might be going on, on in my head and mm. and I just, I get, the, my joy is watching the kids. Like, yeah. freaking love it. I love it. And, yeah, I just focus on them leading up yeah. on the day. It's all about them. So that's, yeah, that's my little piece of joy for Christmas and they make it beautiful. <laughs> And that's be- and that is beautiful because I remember what that was like as a kid. Yeah, it was a magical, magical yeah, time. Yeah, the best like, and I, as a kid. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous. Mm. So yeah, I think kids do definitely make um, make a, a Christmas. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, another thing I have had written down is, and I actually thought about this. Um, have you ever been to like work conferences, Meso, where you've got to obviously be in a room full of people you don't know? I used to do it a lot in corporate days, mm. and. Uh, one thing I used to do is when I go to a conference, I'd write down three goals that I wanted to achieve or say if, say if I was going to a networking event, I'd write down three things that I wanted to get out of the night. So it might be I want to talk to this person, I want to introduce myself to this person and I want to get this person's contact. So I'd have, Love yeah, it. I have some goals because, you know, going into a uh, room full of people you don't know can be daunting, but if you sort of set yourself some goals, then you sort of make that your mission to go and get those goals. So if you're yeah. in a so, uh, so, uh, situation where you're not drinking and you're socialising, make it your mission to do something outside the, the box that's yes. going to keep you distracted but also connect with people because I, I find that if you're – and the example I'll give you is I was away uh, not long ago and there was a new person there in the group we with, so I chatted to her. And instead of having the same conversations with the same people, which tends to happen when you're on the source, um, eventually you go back to, you know, re- retelling the same stories and having the same laughs. So I actually got to meet someone new and everyone's got a story to tell. So yeah. I got to know this lady better. We ended up finding out we uh, knew people, we knew the same group of people. She told me some things about, because um, my son uh, has to wear glasses and he's struggling with it at the moment. So she used to work at optometrist, so she gave me some tips for that. And I was like, if I had been drinking this situation, I would not have deep-dived into that conversation with her. Yes, you got curious. You yeah. got curious and asked a question, and then when you asked the question, it un- folds and all of a sudden leads you into an optometrist. Yes. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> which helped, Who which knew? helped me. And I just think... <laughs> The connections that you make when you're not drinking are just so more genuine and you remember the conversations. You don't have, yes. you have to put the pieces together. So you're getting a lot more out of it than if you were, you know, had, had her in the headlock. <laughs> as, as, headlock. as you would do, give her a noogie. <laughs> True. You remember those conversations and they're wholesome connections. Yeah. And that's how I felt the other night catching up with my new friends. Yes. It was wholesome connections and I remember every every single thing. I love that. It's unreal. I think um, what I thought was important as well, like, you know, leading up, if you've got those WhatsApp groups, so lots of people have got your little WhatsApp group to catch up or even family WhatsApp groups is, and we've spoken about it before and we won't stop banging on about it, <coughs> is communicating, telling the group, saying to the group, just giving you a heads up, I'm not going to be drinking or I'm trying to um, rein in the drinking. I need your support on this. Don't particularly want to talk about it on the night, but just could you support me and not pressure me here? Or or even getting one person, you know, you've got to kind of, in those situations, if you know one person can be in your corner or in your team, that's Perfect, because you're always going to have someone that's going to push back yeah. on it as well. So to have sort of someone in your corner that knows that you're not drinking is uh, is essential, I think. I love that, mate, calling it out. I reckon yeah. You, yeah. you have mentioned that before and I need to do that better. Yeah, well, it just saves that awkward situation when you – I actually had a message from um, one of my best friends the other day and she wanted us to talk about it too, is he said something I would love to hear more about – like when there are people out there who don't want to completely stop drinking but might want to learn how to go um, out for dins, just enjoy one or two and then drive home. 
<laughs> she said, or are you guys all about or all about all or nothing? About, Does that make sense? I was about to say, do those people exist? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I said, one or two, we're one or two bottle minimum. We never have one or two glasses, like, ever. Like, not a thing. Not a thing for us. But there is people that do. Yeah. So it's interesting to have that conversation as well. And I want to make it really clear, and I think you agree, this podcast isn't a blanket sobriety yeah. pod- podcast. It's all different levels of where how alcohol affects your life and relationships. So um, anyway, the, what I was getting back to before, she said, because on Saturday night I even said to a few people who were like, drink, drink, blah, girl's name, mm-hmm. and she said, no, thanks, I'm good. And they said, really? And she said, yep, full stop. And I love that. Just Love you, the full stop. Full stop. You don't have to give your reasons. It's like I'm vegetarian and if someone's passing around the turkey, they're not going to say, oh, go on, just have a little bit of turkey. <laughs> so true. And if you are, you're an a-hole. Don't do that. So who are you to say, go on, just have one drink? No. Someone, this is someone, might, someone might spike your, spike your Christmas lunch, mate, with some turkey. <laughs> Actually, the only person that would do that is my brother. He would, like, he would wave like a chicken wing in front of me, chicken drumstick. Um, oh, that's gold. Yeah, so it's, I think it's just uh, really just people will push back mm. and I think it's just having being armed with those tools to be able to respond. And you know where, where I'm at at the moment? Like when you, yeah. when you said about last, uh, you read that text out to me, I think it was last week. And I was like, oh, I'd love to be that person that could just go out and have one or two. But in my head, <laughs> like one or two glasses, in my head I'm like, what is the point? Yes, that's, mate. That's I'm like I'd rather drink a non-alcoholic drink than drink yep. two glasses of champagne and that's it. Yep, I'm exactly the same. I don't know, is that right? One or two. Yeah, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but yeah. <laughs> mate, I've been the, exactly the same. Like if we used to finish work, like we, whenever we flew into whatever city and people would do a hot turn and they go down and have drinks, a, a, a drink, what's the point? Like what's, there's no point to one drink or two. No point. Yep, all or nothing. Like, <laughs> yep. And I think, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get Polak. <coughs> like, no. That's it. I think um, mindset is a massive one when you're socialising sober or alcohol-free because if you're, and I've done this before, if I'm going to an event and I'm like, I'm not drinking, it's going to be crap, I'm going to miss out on this, it's going to be so crap, yeah, you will have a crap night. But if you go in, if you change the narrative and go in going, I cannot wait, I'm going to talk to this person, this person, and then I'm going to watch everyone else, like, start slurring their words, (laughs) and then I'm going to wake up the next day And I'm going to jump out of bed, go for a walk, bang. Like the mindset is a huge, huge part of it, huge piece of the puzzle. What is for me anyway is is going in there and just going, like I've got this dress-up party coming up Friday night. (gasps) And and so I've purposely, I've got the best, it's a Miami Vice theme, I've like got the (laughs) best outfit. So I'm going to be rocking in there all confident, just like, you know, banging around. And, um, And I know that I will walk out of there at midnight, whatever, and I'll still, yeah. I won't have a sh- one shoe off. I won't have, you know, started doing <laughs> gyrating on the dance floor. Like, oh, no whack. No whack dancing. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have just been a pest to anyone else and, you know, been up on the tables dancing. So I'll walk away with dig- my dignity still intact. <laughs> yeah. Yes, too right. So mindset. Oh, that's so true, mindset. And it's true. And that also um, follows on with alcohol-free drinks, which mm. is something I want to talk about, being prepared, like if you're going to a picnic or picnic. <laughs> Who's going to a picnic? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's picnic season. We're in summer. <laughs> <laughs> so when you rock over to your Christmas and you take your drinks, look how gorgeous this why? Like, look how beautiful that is to rock yeah. up with your with your fancy drinks, yeah. you know? Like, how gorgeous are they? And do you know what? And you've got that glass breezer. Oh, oh get yeah. Some really got... fancy glasses. So for our listeners, it's um, mm. the, it's a great Gatsby. It's like Leonardo doing the, oh. doing the meme, you know, the meme. <laughs> <laughs> it's, him. it's totally him. So you feel classy. <laughs> yes, you do. Classy with a classy glass. And I think um, I was pointing to Altina Rosé then, by the way, for the listeners, and the the Smug Girls cans and the Altina Rosé cans. They're just they're gorgeous 
And I think you can dress up your drinks. Yeah. The glasses. Even if you get some fancy plastic glasses if you're at your picnic. Um, or some fancy, what's that ice? Oh, yes. Um, so it's called Drinks Splinks, and they're the coolest ice cubes ever. Mmm. They're super mm, cool. Yeah. Garnish. Have a look at Mindful Mocktail. Oh, that's Mindful yeah. Mocktail does the most amazing mocktails and jazzes them up with just gorgeous garnish and gorgeous. So you can make it really fun. That's what I mean. It doesn't have to be boring, not drinking. <laughs> Mindset. Make it fun. Even um, uh, somebody else was talking about the other day, like if you're talking to your um, your waitress or your waiter, just say, I'm not drinking, bring me the fanciest cocktail. Yes, they I love, love it. Yes, they do, mate. That's own a it, own it. I, um, yeah. One thing too, because we're not quite there, like obviously alcohol-free drinks are still in their infancy very much. Mm. So I found that my local bottle shop, they've got a tiny, like a small range. They're good on them though. Mm. I love that they've got alcohol-free choice. Uh, mm. However, they don't stock, you know, a huge range. So, Mesa, you touched on it, be prepared, also be stocked. So have, yes. have like, you know, go to your Brunswick Aces because we love them um, and, <laughs> and shop up and, and have, you know, have a stash at home so that yeah. when, even if someone rings you impromptu, do you want to go to the park? Just want to have that picnic. <laughs> <laughs> You can go bang. Yep, I, yeah. I'm going to go to the park and yeah. So yeah. and don't forget the discount code too. What is it, Meso? Yep, flaunt ten is your DC code for Brunswick Asia. So that's flaunt ten F L. A-U-N-T, 10, which will get you 10% off Brunswick cases. Yeah. Hey, can I just tell you a quick little story? Do. Um, speaking of Christmas parties and alcohol-free drinks, I was talking to a client the other day and mm. their Christmas party is coming up and she said the venue is offering alcohol-free drinks on the menu because some of the team don't drink. Oh, yes. And that's in, re- that's in, that's in regional Victoria. That's amazing. Go you, whoever you are. Yeah. How thoughtful. That's so good. So good. I love that. I love how thoughtful people are being. It, it really, uh, good, good, good. Good. Offering that choice. As Again, we always keep banging on about choice. Um, yes. And going back to um, those conversations when people say, why aren't you drinking? I know you've got to pick your battles here. I, I put yeah. it on a story the other day and it could, depending on who you're talking to, you could say, well, why are you drinking? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's a tricky one and could turn confrontational, yeah. so you've got to be careful. But I think it's a really good opportunity to educate people as well. You're not going to bring them in and give them a whole session about alcohol and alcohol-free. <laughs> put, but... put them in a headlock and give them a, <laughs> <laughs> give them a session. <laughs> Read this book. Um <laughs> But I think it's a really good opportunity to gently and kindly educate your friends and family about alcohol-free world. Um, and you're not going to stand there on your soapbox and bang on about it, but it's a, it's an interesting topic and people might be a little bit resistant to it, but you plant the seed. And we've done this here on the podcast too, Breeza, like the amount of people that are messaging us and in, we are inspiring people <laughs> to choose alcohol-free drinks is just off off, off the hook, isn't it? And, so, and given that both of us didn't know about alcohol-free drinks until like a <laughs> couple of months ago. Now, Mate, I've got more alcohol-free drinks in my fridge than I've ever had booze in the house. <laughs> I'm a bit the same, mate. I've, I've got a whole trolley now. A drinks trolley. <laughs> a trolley. <laughs> Dedicated <laughs> to AF drinks. You start your own bottle shop. Oh, there might be something in that. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a bottle shop in, in Bendigo. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, um, so when people ask you, you know, why aren't you drinking, some key, work, key things you could say is I just want to remember everything. I'm having, you know, having trouble with memory loss. I got a message from a friend last night um, who said, oh, she goes, I don't black out. I just don't remember conversations from two minutes ago. And I was the same when, too, Brisa. When she's on like, the sauce. Yeah. Yep. Like even not drinking that much. Like just really basic. I, I remember going out for dinner with her and having Margie's and I don't remember the conversation. <laughs> conversation. So I wasn't completely polax, yeah. but, uh, you know, that little memory loss. So you could just say, yeah, I just want to remember everything. You could say my hangovers now are just unbearable. Yeah, yep. Um, Which they are anyway. And, That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And this one that I'm coming up with now is I'm spritzing. Okay. So instead of having 
um, your full wines or you could have half a glass of wine and then top it with some soda water or mineral water or whatever and it's spritz how fun is the word spritz it's a good word isn't it yeah I'm so, you, so, you jazz, so i'm jazzing it up with a bit of spritz that's a hash- um, that's, i feel that's our hashtag for today <laughs> <laughs> i'm spritzing <laughs> yeah i love that new t-shirt T- tweet that yeah <laughs> I'll be in tweet that because I don't think any of our <laughs> listeners would be on Twitter. But anyway, tweet it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, if you're really stuck, you could say, um, <laughs> I'm on antibiotics. I can't take, can't drink while I'm on antibiotics. What are you on antibiotics for? I've got an earache because you won't yeah. shut the <laughs> <laughs> My job. <laughs> How do you? I love that one. <laughs> That's a risk. That's a ripper. I'm going to pull that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rip it out. Um, yeah, and obviously just communicating and taking. Oh, you could take some extra alcohol-free drinks for your friends to try. Yeah, the people people like are curious to try them, aren't they? Mm-hmm. I was at a um, friend's 40th last weekend or whatever it was, and yeah, I had. I don't even know if I said this the other week, but yeah, I had my alcohol-free drink, and everyone had a taste of it. Oh, because it was it. all looking pretty. Um, what about yeah. another one liner? How do you reckon this would go down? I, I'm not drinking okay. because I turn into a filthy whore bag. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that would go down. Yeah. That would shut people up, though, wouldn't it? Like, you've got, where do you go with that? <laughs> you've got you've got nothing, to have you? So it shut, full stop at the end. <laughs> oh, that is so good. I can't. I can't. <laughs> so yeah, have a, have a one liner. Um, I reckon it's good. Yeah, have a little one liner. I like it. Um, the other one I had um, written down was, and I haven't tried this one, but I reckon <laughs> I'm going to. Not, not, it's not a one-liner. It was, um, okay. <laughs> it was um, be in the driver's seat and you organise the social outing. Uh, control. Control. Control free. Control. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of saying to your friends, let's catch up at the pub, you might say, let's go and have a hit of golf. I don't know if anyone's playing golf, but um, <laughs> <laughs> after their picnic, <laughs> yeah, after their picnic, <laughs> or let's go to the movies, yeah, and then and then we'll go to a cafe that doesn't serve booze. I don't know. Just yeah. you can think outside the, the box, the square. I never know which to say, box or square. Anyway, same same. Square box. <laughs> <laughs> think outside the square box, <laughs> and um, yeah, think it like let's go for a walk. You said you touched on it a few episodes ago. Go for a walk instead yeah. of going for a sesh. Yep, dictate it. Yeah. You, Dictator. Dictator. <laughs> <laughs> to, to real control freak. <laughs> <laughs> the fat controller. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I think I think the other thing is it's only as awkward as you make it. Yeah. Like, yeah, too I right. I think people probably feel more awkward about the fact that you're not drinking than the fact that you're not drinking yourself. Like, yeah, I don't know, yeah. does that make sense? It's, it's true. I, and I said this actually, I think it was in Ep 2, I, I, I made this big call about, you know, I'm expected to drink, I'm expected to have a bender. No, I'm not. <laughs> no one's expecting me to do that. I was doing that. Yes. Do you know mate. what I mean? Like, you, like no one cares. If, if people care, and you had somebody ask you about that a little while ago actually, feel free to talk mm. about that. If people care about your alcohol consumption, that's on them. Yeah. That's gotten that's actually a reflection of them being enabled or enabling you or them you need they need you in their alcohol circle yeah. because that makes them feel good. Yep. They don't care about how you feel. They don't care that you're, they're not going to be there the next day when you're hungover, doing your head in, shameful, hating yourself. They don't care. They've got what they want out of you from getting bent out of shape, smoking ciggies and being a menace. So true, mate. It's so reckon? true. Wow, that was a rant. I loved it. <laughs> how to, yeah. I actually, yeah, I did have someone the other day uh, talking about something and I was like, oh, I haven't had a drink for five months. And they're like, oh, they said, I can't remember what they said, but it was something like, Oh God, that must be no fun for you. And I'm like, <laughs> you've just opened, you've just opened the bloody, <laughs> you've just opened the door for me to go. Blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, actually, mate, um, I said his name. I said, actually, it's been bloody awesome. I said, I've never felt better. Da, da, da. I just I had a little rant. Yeah. Because I think that's people's natural reaction. He's like, if yeah. you're not drinking, you can't have fun. Yeah, oh. and I I was probably like that too. Oh, time my hand, I've got two hands up for that. <laughs> Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up. 
Like up until it's like true. June the 13th when I had my last drink. <laughs> not, not that long ago. There yeah. You go. I was still you, fully like, you've got to have booze to yeah, have fun. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Boring. <Totally. laughs> but look at us now. We're flying. Yeah. Like, how fun are we? Yeah, I Thanks think we're fun. fun. I don't know. Anyone yeah. else does. But I'll actually be put to the test on, um, <laughs> on, the, oh, yeah. on the weekend. So when I've got this girls trip. Because the last time I went away with one of the girls on the trip, we got really sozzled and we ended up doing, <laughs> we ended up like doing this like yoga routine when we were sozzled oh. and then it got messy. Well, we ended up on the pool table like it was, it was fun. But her, her son was in the room watching us the whole time. <laughs> and my partner was there as well. He's going, you don't have to stay, mate. Like you can leave the room if you want because we were just like up and about fully into it. So I'll be put to the test this weekend. Like I'm up for sober dancing. I do it. I don't know if you dance at home, Meso. Yeah, I have a bop. Yeah, have a bop. Chuck the music on, have a bop. So I've just got to sort of get that, um, you know, thought out of my head that people will be looking at me dancing because they're not going to be. They're going to be too busy doing their other dance moves. And if, when you're watching other people dance, what are you thinking? Look at them go. <laughs> yeah. They are rocking it. I don't care if they're doing a two-step, if they're out of time. Anyone that's getting up having a dance, don't tell me there is not one person that just wishes they had the courage to get up there and bust a move. So spot on, mate. Yes. Don't you reckon? Yes. Everyone wants to dance. Yep. Get your dance yeah. on. So, yeah, I'll, re- yeah. I'll circle back on the dance moves from this <laughs> girls' weekend trip. <laughs> Don't know if there's a pool table there, but I might sniff one out. <laughs> See how I go sober. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, what else have I got here? Another, I've got another one line I'm going to throw in to maybe to wrap yes. it up. And throw this, it in the mix. This was um, I went to Canberra. Oh, it would have been it was a long time ago. And I was in my 20s <laughs> yeah. and I I was on a leadership program and we went to Parliament House in Canberra. Just quickly, did you do anything in your 30s? Because you have to- <laughs> That's when I had babies, so I was just in lockdown. <laughs> I was in lockdown. Actually, no, in my news, I did do a rotary exchange to America for five weeks when I was pregnant, 20 weeks pregnant. Oh, did you? Yeah, bopping around America for five weeks. Oh, <laughs> and I was sober the whole time there, obviously. Uh, but oh I, um, yeah, I, so I was in Canberra on this leadership program, went to Parliament House, saw, uh, we had a session with Ted Bailu, the, uh, former Premier of Victoria. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said something that still sticks with me to this day. And he said, his one liner was, do something every day that scares you. Oh, I love this. Isn't it powerful? I love this. Yes. Yes. I really love that. Going off the back of that, I was listening to Kate Langbrook on Sarah Greenberg. I listened to that too. Podcast. Did yes. you? I, Life of Greatness, yes. Sarah Greenberg from Listen One. Oh, my God. And I love Kate Lanebrook. I love Sarah as well. Both Same. Amazing. But Kate said. Did you know I listened to that? Or did we just listen no. to that? No. How funny is that? Yeah. <laughs> How funny. <we're- laughs> so good. That was a we ripper. I actually, I actually forwarded that episode to a couple of people because I was like, you need oh, to. Oh, did yeah. you? Yes. The ripper. She said nothing in life worthwhile doing is easy oh yes yes so and my mum has <sighs> always said that to me whenever I'm nervous about doing something she said anything worthwhile doing makes you nervous I love that nothing yeah I love that too and so yeah coming into Christmas it's not easy if you're wanting to rein in the drinks go alcohol free whatever decision you choose yeah it's not going to be easy but gee whiz it's going to be bloody worthwhile don't you reckon? and you'll make yourself proud yes <laughs> because I did a drink. Did a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really important too. Like boundaries are really important. If you, you know, you can say no yep. or even no to an event, yep. particularly yes. coming out of lockdown as well. But, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day and she was really pressured to go to um, a function and she was getting pressured saying, you know, you have to be there, have to be there. I'm like, you don't have to go. Like you don't have to, no one has to go anywhere. If you don't want to go to something, don't go. Honour yourself. You can say, me and Freeman actually says this one, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I'm at capacity. Oh, yes. Cups full. Yep, sorry. Like it. There you go. So, yeah, 
Um, high low actually, they've got a, a product out as well. It's a can of drink half wine and half spritz, so it's a, a ready to drink mm. like one of these. Yep. So yeah, that's your little spritz in a can. Have a look. That's out good. That and too. actually, because we all know that you know your pouring can be out of whack. <laughs> the free, free, free pouring <laughs> yeah. situation. So these guys have made it nice and easy for you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yes. And good luck to everyone if you're out socialising in the next few weeks. Over Christmas, yep. good luck. Yeah, you've good got luck. this. You're you can do your, it. Yes, you're not on your own. Send us in some pickies, DM yep. us, hop on to Insta, tell us how you're going, and send in your shame stories and text regrets if you need them. Yep, and make yourself <laughs> proud for the next day. Make yourself proud, exactly. Yep. Don't be that Christmas mess like I was a few years ago. And even if you do, it's okay. It's okay. We're here to pick up the pieces. <laughs> So text regret, we had this sent in by a listener. There's a song called, uh, by, it's called Genghis Khan, and the song lyrics say, I get a little Genghis Khan, I don't want you to get it on with no one else but me. <laughs> She's actually hopped on Plenty of Fish, the dating app, and sent this. I get a little Genghis Khan. I don't want you to get it on with no one else but me. Come F me now. <laughs> she's, she's tacked on just a little bit of extra for some context. <laughs> oh, heck. Oh, I so obviously she was off her, off her trolley. Right off, yeah. <laughs> just she said there was so many spelling errors in that message, yeah. But she sent it to a plenty of fish dating app. Oh, did she get a response? Did he? Did he send back some lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> Who dis? <laughs> oh, that's out there. That is out it there. Is, yeah, I like. Yeah, I like yeah. that in her drunken like haze, she still could remember song lyrics. <laughs> yes, I know. And she actually said that I think Genghis Khan was my breakup song, so oh, she's. Oh, really- yeah. <laughs> Really mixed it up. Really got creative. <laughs> That's gold. That's gold. It is good, isn't it? Well done. Thank you, listener. <laughs> and send in your text regrets. We want to hear Yeah, we, we do get a good honestly. giggle out of them. Yeah. It's time for the recommendation of the week. I had heaps, actually, Meso. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> heaps, but I've, I've uh, just selected one from a weekly record. Okay. <laughs> and this is because I actually got a uh, drink sent to me from Vin Zero. So Vin Zero are a – so they – import drinks and distribute to, you know, to retail. So they sent me some drinks. It was like a little surprise package and I'm, I'm sort of chipping away through the drinks and I would never have selected these drinks. A lot of them are from overseas. I would never, ever have chosen these drinks to drink. So my recommendation for the week is don't be an AF drink snob like oh. <laughs> like I have been in the past, full, full <laughs> disclaimer, uh, and, yeah, Mix things up and try drinks that you, you may not normally have selected. Love. So, yes. yeah, so branch, branch, you know, spread your wings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, try something you, you might just surprise yourself, which I have. I've gotten onto a couple of um, Ripper beers, one's from Belgium, one's from Germany, I think. Yeah. And, and one's from that? Canada. Yeah, one's oh. from Canada. Canadia. Because I obviously, I try and support the Aussie brands. I love our yeah. Aussie brands. But, yeah, I've just, you know, spread my wings and discovered some delightful alcohol-free, new alcohol-free drinks. So Good. mix things up, peeps. Yeah, I like that. You don't know unless you give it a go. That's it. Don't judge a book yeah. by its cover. There you go. Exactly. All right. My Mine is, you know, how I love it. <laughs> you love your product. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Coming into summertime, <laughs> fake tan. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love fake tan so much. I actually fake tan weekly. It just makes me feel so good. It just makes me feel so good. Um, During lockdown um, last year, I actually accidentally bought the wrong colour and I couldn't return it. So I was like, ugh, what am I going to do? I'll buy my normal colour and I'll mash them together. And do you know since mashing them together, I've had so many people go, oh, my God, what cup? what's your fake tan? (laughs) So these are them. So it's Latan. It's Uber Stay. It, it, they say it lasts up, up to 10 days. That's the little. Oh, heck. Um, that's a, lot, that's that's a long little, time. Probably a little bit 
ambitious. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Fake advertising at its best. <laughs> but, but, no, they do stay pretty sturdy. Mm. And so one of them is ash base and one of them is green base. They would be perfectly fine on their own, but if you want to get busy and modify everything like I do, mash them together. And just another quick one is the back mitt. You love have the you back No, I haven't, but I've seen, oh. I've seen your back mitt. <laughs> so Latan, um, for listeners, it's actually just a big, long cloth about, would you say, a metre long? Yep. Um, it's got little handles at the end. One side is that really nice sort of velvety, um, uh, what your fake tan mitt would be like. And then you just, you know, when you dry yourself with the yeah, towel. Yeah, give these ones. Like, yeah, give it those ones. <laughs> That's how you do on your back. We call it the boyfriend oh, because yes. when, you know, when your boyfriend's not around, this is what you're using to. Um, so we just to, need to, to now find back. a device that does a zip up of your dress as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my kids are pros. I'm like, I'm like kids, come here, do mum zip up. <laughs> oh my god, our um, work uniforms at Virgin did that as well, and you'd be in all your gear and just so hot and sweaty and just wriggling <laughs> around trying to get it. Oh, it was just a hot mess. Um, Latan, where do you? I'm going to try Latan, that, mate. Priceline, our Priceline, okay. or Chemist Warehouse. Sometimes you're so, mm, not really. I wouldn't say in supermarkets. They do have Latan in supermarkets, but, but not. Yeah, I've never ones, seen so. that one. That looks really cool. Black yeah, bottle. it's good. Yeah, look out for the one that says t- last up to ten days. Uber stay for all skin times. Yeah, Uber. There you go. Get yourself some tannage on for summertime. Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's about it. Great, great chat, Breeze. I great loved chat. It. Another another banger chat, mate. Loved yeah. it. And thanks. Yeah. Like I learn. Like I learn from you Ooh. during these chats. So thank Same. you. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. We're teaching each other. Yeah, it's so good. I love it. Yeah, I love it. So we're back in your ears next week. I can't remember what we're talking about next week. Something. 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 Something fun. <laughs> something, something fun. Something alcohol free. Yes. <laughs> Some sort of shame. <laughs> oh yeah, I've already know what I'm going to pull out for next week. So, oh god. Yeah, I'm preparing. I'm preparing myself <laughs> Ment- <laughs> me- mentally for that one. <laughs> and also, well done to you too, May. So you had a chat to when, as we're recording this. You had a chat to Joe from Smug last night. If you <laughs> want to have a look at that and listen to Meso's story, go to Smug underscore AF underscore Cocktails at Instagram. Jump on their ITV channel and you'll see Meso on there. So well Yay. done, well done. Having a bit of a thank you so you much, mate. Put yourself thank out you. there. Good job. Got amongst it. Got amongst thank it. you. Thanks so much. Take care, mate. Okay, <laughs> okay bye. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> This podcast is proudly produced by our audio engineer, music extraordinaire, Eric Ladd. We love you, Eric.